live at Studio C. This is your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play. -play. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up with Jerem Jordan. We now welcome to the show, because he's got time for us, and we've got time for we him. We always have time for Dennis. We just run out. S Super Bowl champion, former BYU great, Dennis Pitta. Dennis, great to have you back on the show. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you making time. Can I, can I give... Jaron, one quick uh, compliment, a rare compliment. Sure. I think your hair looks really, really good this morning. Oh, thanks, the man. The part is sharp. The <laughs> cloth is tight. It just, it looks good. I'm, Thank you. You know, you pick yourself up, and I, I think, uh, I think a compliment is deserved. Thank you. I don't, I don't quite have the vertical volume uh, that you have. I, I do want to ask: Is that a Bob Ross behind you? <laughs> Um, no, this is a uh, Linda Pitta original somewhere behind me. There. Oh, not. <laughs> um, are you trying to allude to the fact that, yes, I'm living with my parents right now? I did not know um, that. You did it? Okay. Well, we talked about it in the break. Well, and, uh, <laughs> this is TV magic, Dennis. I think you were trying to embarrass me. And yes, I am living with my parents, okay? Um, I just recently graduated college. I'm back with my parents. I'm just trying to get you know, my feet underneath me. <laughs> and uh but things are trending in the right direction for me so uh i appreciate you asking there are easier ways to get babysitters right <laughs> i'll tell you it is nice to have built-in babysitters yes. but um we have like a three-month-old so it's still tough to leave her with true. with anybody true you need but, that quiet um, room at the movie theater yeah we, we recently moved to california so we're living in carlsbad right now Ooh. we're waiting on our house to be finished and uh Live with my parents with four kids, and it's it's an exciting time for the family. So <laughs> well, Dennis, we're, we're doing really well. Thanks for coming on the show. We just wanted the life update. We didn't want to ask about anything else. So, uh, as a matter of fact, I appreciate I, the time. Ben was worried that I wasn't going to get on the Zoom in time because I'm on my parents' computer, and I had to download Zoom onto their computer, so it took me some extra time. And uh, we're here. We made it. Technology is hard, and uh, we overcame it. Listen, one day I would like to have a Wikipedia page, but uh, I'm going to go to yours today and edit it and say, lives with parents. It's like Super Bowl <laughs> champ, NC Records, lives with parents. Uh, it's, been a, it's been a steep drop off for me over the last handful of years. Yeah, but, but here we are. Dennis Pitta joining us over Zoom from his parents' house in Carlsbad, California, while he waits for his home in Orange County to be built. Okay, Dennis, now that we've got all the important stuff out of the way, I, I do need to ask about one thing because you left a relationship in Arizona coaching with your brother-in-law, Max Hall, and your good friend, Ty Detmer, at American Leadership Academy. So is there coaching in the future for you in Carlsbad in Southern California, or, or is that just an Arizona thing? No, I think at some point I'll, I'll end up coaching uh, out in Orange County. I. I don't live far from John Beck, and he's already putting the full court press on me to come and, and coach with him. He helps out at San Clemente High School, which is, you know, where Isaac Rex is from. Byron Rex is a coach there. John helps as the quarterback coach. And um, so at some point, I think I, I, I may venture down there and, and help coach. I've already talked with their head coach there. So I coached a lot of special teams, too, with Max and, and, and Ty out in the uh, – at ALA in Arizona. And uh, John reached out to me like a couple months ago. He's like, hey, our special teams coordinator just left. We need you to come be our special teams coordinator in San Clemente. And I was like, John, I'm not even going to be living out there. I'm not commuting <laughs> 45 minutes from Carlsbad up there just to be your special teams coach when I don't even have a son in the program yet. So just hold your horses. I'll get there at some point. But um, I, uh, I have to just wait a little bit. High school coaching actually takes up a – a lot of time, especially when you're an unpaid volunteer and you're trying to justify it to your wife that you need to still be there every afternoon. <laughs> um, but it, it's a ton of fun. And I do, I do want to continue doing that at some point, but I think I'll take, you know, a year or two off and, uh, you know, try and get my feet underneath me. I got to, you know, move into a house. I got to get out of my parents' basement. And, uh, so things have to kind of turn around for me before I can commit to that. We're talking to Dennis Pitta, who lives with his parents and is oh on my. sabbatical from high school special teams coordinator coaching on BYU. <laughs> Dennis, we were talking unpaid about... Unpaid volunteer, yes. Yeah, unpaid volunteer. Uh, sounds like us the last uh, 10 years here. Uh, <laughs> when it comes to recruiting, we were talking about when BYU will kind of take this... We think they'll take a jump in the Big 12 in terms of talent. 
The recruiting rankings have not been favorable, generally speaking, for BYU the last six or seven years. Um, when, when and, and how, uh, when will BYU take a jump, if you think that, and uh, how, will we, how will we quantify that, in your opinion? Yeah, I mean, recruiting is always difficult. I don't, I don't think BYU will ever take this momentous leap into a different stratosphere as far as recruiting goes. I think you're always going to kind of be in that same echelon. Now, the Big 12 will help. For sure. I mean, there's that, that will draw more people being able to be on that big of uh, a stage and, and compete at that, you know, power five conference level. Um, but I, I think recruiting is going to kind of stay, stay where it is for the most part. I just think at BYU, it's a unique place. You have to have a certain type of player, a certain type of individual. And, uh, you know, we've seen in the past and just kind of bring in anybody in, in you know, I think in the Croton era comes to mind, and it just doesn't always work properly, no matter how talented the kid is. I think there's a certain um, element, you know, in, in their personality and in kind of, you know, their, uh, you know, their value system and all that, that has to align. And so it, it does attract a unique recruit, um, which I think is a, a great thing for BYU, but it's also a challenge for recruiting, obviously. And you're not going to always get, you know, all these five-star and four-star recruits to come there. Um, but that being said, you can get, you know, a handful of those guys and, and get some other guys into the program that you can kind of build and develop and, and, and still have a really successful program like we've seen over the last handful of years. If it's generally the same, like you said, do you feel like BYU can win a Big 12 title or does it have to get to a certain level to actually win that? No, I think we've seen teams in the past that, that would have been right there. I, I think, you know, I go back to, to the John Beck couple of years that, that he was the quarterback. Then with Max Hall in our group, I think, you know, and, and even just a couple of years ago with Zach and those guys, I think the talent is there. I, I, I don't think you're going to have a consistent, you know, every year competitive team that's going to, you know, push for a Big 12 championship. But I think you're going to have teams every so often that will, will rise to that level and you'll have kind of the right talent around each other and the right guy at quarterback and you'll be able to make a push for that. It's not going to be easy. I mean, don't get me wrong, but uh, I think you absolutely can compete for that. And, um, you know, and, and when you have a special group in there, you've got, you know, an old senior quarterback or a, an experienced quarterback, you can make a run at it. Dennis Pitt is with us on BYU Sports Nation. Let's focus in on the BYU tight end specifically. And I'd like to talk about Isaac Rex, who, by the way, since we're talking recruiting, he was part of the 2017 class. He was a three-star. That class was ranked 63rd overall. Mm -hmm. Okay? Okay. So Isaac Rex, all the way back in 2017. Here we are in 2022, Dennis. And he's on some NFL radars for sure, uh, including Mel Kuyper of ESPN. He says he's one of BYU's top four NFL prospects. What are your expectations for a guy like Isaac Rex in 2022? Well, I, I don't put a lot of stock into uh, stars coming out of high school. But as you guys know, I think I was a zero star recruit, and it worked out all right for me. Yes, it did. Um, I don't know. You're living so at home three now. Star, I would have taken three stars. Three stars sounds pretty good right now compared to where I came from. <laughs> um, but, you know, recruiting is such a crapshoot. I mean, you can never – who knows who really is a five-star, four-star, three-star. It, 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 so much is circumstance. So much is where you play. So much is the competition you're playing against. Anyways, I, I don't put a lot of stock into that. But that being said, um, yeah, I, I think Isaac Rex is, is absolutely an NFL guy and uh, should be getting the attention that he's getting right now. He had a monster freshman year and he had injuries last year, and, and they just didn't quite get the tight end involved like we had all had hoped mm -hmm. um, the previous season. But, you know, he's a guy that should be on everybody's radar. And, and you know, he, he suffered a gruesome injury, and hopefully he can come back 100% from that and, and be the same guy that we saw him in you know two years ago with Zach Wilson and catching all those tight end or all those touchdowns and that's really his greatest strength because he's a, a massive red zone target and threat and somebody that you have to account for when you get down closer to the end zone because he's just such a big body he's got great hands he can catch the ball away from his frame and, and create difficult matchups in, in tight windows back yeah. there which we saw him do uh, with Zach as his quarterback and so I love Isaac and his potential, but I think when you talk about the tight ends as a whole at BYU right now, I think you have to include Dallin Holker in that mix. And he's worked extremely hard. He's a guy that can really be a downfield threat and somebody who can catch a ton of balls this year. 
Um, I, I saw him in the off season and he was out there and he had his wife catching jug machines for him <laughs> or shooting nice. jugs off to him and he's catching it. And, uh, you know, he's just out there all by himself. He's a guy who's been putting in the work, um, you know, away from the, the team stuff and, and a guy that's really trying to get himself ready for a big season. And you talk to the coaches there and I think they all really want to get him involved. They understand the talent level there and what he can bring to the table and the mismatches he can create with his speed and his athleticism. And so with Isaac and with Dallin, those two guys can really be a great tandem at tight end. And I'm excited to watch both of them on the field. 100%. Those guys are studs. Okay, let's ask you about Matt Bushman. He almost uh, made the playoff roster due to some injuries with the Chiefs. He was at least in the box for the Super Bowl, had a great seat there. What's the key for Matt Bushman to be able to stick in the NFL? Yeah, I've had a couple conversations with Matt about kind of the NFL and all that stuff. A lot of it was as a as a guy who's kind of on the back end of the depth chart on tight end which he's going to be entering as an undrafted free agent um you have to be a special teams player you have to be a dude that they can put out on the field in special teams because that adds value to you you can't just be a, a one-dimensional player when you're not the starter especially at the tight end position if you're not a core special teams player there's not a lot of justification they'll have to keep you on the roster. Now, that being said, you know, I, I told him to focus a lot on special teams, but also to be able to make it in the NFL, you have to do something really, really well. And I, I don't think anybody's expecting Matt to go out there and, and be a punishing blocker. I certainly wasn't. That wasn't part of my game. I, that wasn't something that I was even asked to really do. But what you have to do is, is do something really well. And what Matt does really well is his ability to go up and make tough catches. And a lot like I talked about Isaac, Matt can go up and he's got great hands. He can go up and, and catch the ball away from his body. He can catch it over people. He can make those tough contested catches. And that's something he does really, really well. And that's what he has to focus on. And that's the thing he has to show at practice day in and day out, that he can go up and even though he's covered, he can make a tough catch. Because that's a valuable thing in the NFL, and that's something – you don't get a lot of separation in the NFL, but if you can make tough catches, they'll find a spot for you. And I think if Matt can just do that and, and continue to get better at that thing that he's already really, really good at, he'll find a place in the NFL. And I've talked to Chad Lewis a couple times, and it seems like it's going really well for him. And uh, hopefully he can find a home and, and find a spot and, and find a way to get on the field. BYU on a mission to become tight end university once again. Dennis Pitt is certainly a large part of that. Who knows, maybe this is the next wave with Isaac Rex and Dallin Holker and Matt Bush when we just talked about. We'll see. Dennis, thanks for joining us live from your parents' basement. Uh, we know how busy you are on this sabbatical as a special teams coordinator. <laughs> I'm an unemployed special teams coordinator, and uh, <laughs> my parents don't have a basement, but yes. Oh, I'm on the true. first floor of two floors, <laughs> and uh, it's going really well. Thank you for asking. <laughs> Jeremy, I'm glad we could have a civil conversation. Yeah. Your hair looks phenomenal. Spencer, you're my favorite as always. <laughs> I hope you guys do well. <laughs> you got it. Thank you. Thanks, <laughs> Thanks Dennis. Great well, to catch well. up with you, bro. We'll do it again soon.